Hey there, I'm Kevin Skinner. I'm the student pastor here at First Baptist Watauga. I would invite for you to join our student ministry every Wednesday night in person at 6 p.m. for some games and for our midweek student ministry worship service. Our student ministry has a simple vision. Understanding that Jesus is the difference in our lives, we want to live the difference, share the difference, and make a difference. And I would invite you to join us in that vision. Now stick around, and I hope that you're encouraged by this recent midweek message. Uh, So I want to start by looking at the second part of Acts chapter 2, verse 47. Acts chapter 2, verse 47 The second part of it says, every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. So we are at the start of 2021. We're at the start of a new year, guys. The old year finally came to an end. And so what I want to do tonight with you guys is I want to cast some vision for this new year. I want to cast some vision for... 2021. What is 2021 going to look like for us? So so if we could, if you'd be willing to, I'd like for you to imagine with me for a moment, all right? So close your eyes. I want you to imagine. So close your eyes. Don't look around. Just eyes closed, all right? Eyes closed. Eyes closed. There we go. <laughs> all right. So right when your eyes are closed, you're just kind of looking into darkness. There's nothing before you. You can't see anything. It's just kind of like a clean slate before you, right? So as we think about the year that just came to a close, right, there was a lot of setbacks. There was a lot of challenges last year, all right? But but just like what you're looking at right now, I want us to look at this year as if it's a clean slate. Right now, we've got a clean slate. You're, you're looking at a clean slate before you. All right, so now let's add something onto this clean slate. What I want you to imagine with me, I want you to imagine something big. I want you to imagine something that is bigger than us. I want you to imagine something that we absolutely could not accomplish apart from a great move of God's Spirit. All right, so what I want you to picture, uh, I, I want you to picture not just one friend, not just two friends, but I want you to picture right now every single one of your friends that does not know Christ, every single one of your friends that's not currently connected to a church body, I want you to picture them coming to church with you on Wednesday nights. I want you to imagine that. Imagine them up in the game room with you. Maybe they're playing the video games. Maybe they're playing pool with you. Maybe they're playing uh, the oversized checkers and losing to me. All right. Maybe maybe they're in the game room with you. I want you to picture them in the game room with you. Then I want you to picture them in this room with you. We've got a lot of open seats in here tonight. What if in those open seats where your friends picture them in those open seats right now, your friends that do not know Jesus sitting in these seats next to you in midweek. But not only are they sitting in this room, they are standing up next to you worshiping the Lord. All right. Not only are they worshiping, but but then they get to hear the good news presented. And then after the good news is presented, after the message is presented, when we have that time of response, that invitation time at the end where all the leaders go to the back, I want you to picture your friends that don't currently know the Lord. I want you to picture them responding, going to the back, giving their lives to Christ, turning from their sins, being set free, receiving salvation, their lives never being the same. I want you to picture that with me. Call to mind their names. Call to mind their faces. What would would it be like if 2021 changed in a different way than 2020 did? What if at the end of 2021 we looked back and we saw Hearts and lives transformed throughout this entire year. What, what, would, what would it be like if at midweek, every single week, you were seeing your friends coming to know the Lord week after week after every single week? I mean, amazing to think about that, to think about the idea that 
every single week a friend of yours getting out of their seat, giving their life to Christ, turning from their sins, being set free. Again, this isn't something we can do on our own. This is something bigger than us. This is only going to happen with a move of God's spirit. What would, what would our schools look like? What would our homes look like? What would Wataga, Keller, Fort Worth, Haltom City, what would these areas look like if all of a sudden all of your friends started getting saved? What, a, what an amazing thing to imagine. What an amazing thing to think about. And guys, I want you to know that God can do something like that. God can do something like that. God is big enough. And so, yes, it's just an imagination for us, but it is something that is very well capable when we will put that in the hands of the Lord. And so I just want you tonight to imagine that with me. And as we talk about this vision, I want to release that 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 thought into the hands of the Lord, believing that he is big enough to accomplish something like that in 2021. You can open your eyes. So, as we think about this, as we imagine this, this idea of God moving in such a mighty way that all of our friends are coming to know the Lord, that homes, that cities, that schools are being transformed, not by, not by anything we are doing in our own strength, but by, by the power of God at work, first in us and then in them. As we think about that, it's not going to happen simply because we imagine it. It's not going to happen simply because we talk about it. But guys, my desire, I don't want tonight to just be a sermon that you listen to and you go home and you forget. I don't want this to just be a regular Wednesday night that, that you're here for, for the hour in this room and then what did we talk about last week? I can't even remember. I want tonight to be a moment for us. That, that, that is a changing moment. I'm glad, I'm glad that we have in this room who we have. We have what I would call the core group in this room. Y'all are the ones that I see week in and week out. But guess what, guys? Y'all are the ones that have the potential to take Jesus with you into the schools to see your friends' lives changed. And so it's not going to happen just because we imagine it. It's not, not going to happen just because I talk about it tonight. If this is going to happen, then there are things that, that we need to already be doing and if we're not already doing those things, we need to begin doing those things. And so we're going to talk about that tonight. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. We're going to look at verses 42 through 47. Acts chapter 2, 42 through 47. And as you're turning there, let me just set this up for you. The book of Acts is written by a man by the name of Luke. You've heard of him before. He's the gospel writer of the book. Luke, good job. All right, not a trick question. All right, he wrote the book of Luke. All right, and so the book of Acts picks up where the book of Luke ends. The book of Acts picks up with, with Jesus having been resurrected. He, he appears to his disciples, and then he, he ascends to heaven. And then following his ascension in the book of Acts, we see God send the Holy Spirit down onto the disciples. God sends the Holy Spirit into the world to be in and with his followers. So understand, if you have given your life to Christ, if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, Jesus is your Lord, then you have the Holy Spirit in you and with you. And this is good news for us because as we think about this vision, this, this idea of of our friends coming to know the Lord, right? It's going to take action on our part. 
But the good news for us is that we don't have to do it alone. In fact, God never intended for you to do it alone. He never intended the disciples to do it alone. That's why he sent his spirit into the world to be in us and to be with us, to empower us for every good work, to empower us to turn from sin, to walk in obedience and to share the good news of Jesus Christ with everyone. So let's look at our passage, Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. It says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and signs were being performed through the apostles. Now all the believers were together and held all things in common. They sold their possessions and property and distributed the proceeds to all as any had need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple and broke bread from house to house. They ate their food with joyful and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. Every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. So as we look at at this passage tonight, I want, I want to start by pointing out that word devoted. If you're to- taking notes, you can underline or highlight in your Bible that word devoted. You see it in, in verse 42. You see it again in verse 46. Devoted. All right. So let me just ask a simple question. What are you devoted to? What are you devoted to? And if, if you could, don't just automatically give an answer to that, right? Don't just automatically answer that with the churchy answer, right? With the answer that, that you know that you're supposed to give. Examine your heart before God right now. Just have an honest conversation with God about the things in your life that you are devoted to. So let me give you a simple definition of devotion Devotion is loyalty or dedication to someone or something. Devotion is loyalty or dedication to someone or something. So as you look at your own life, there may be different things that you are devoted to. As you look at your life, you may say, man, I am loyal and I am dedicated to these things. For some of you, it may be video games, right? You are loyal to those video games. You go back to them time and time again, whether it's on your phone or whether it's on a gaming system. You are devoted and loyal. You are dedicated to those video games, right? I know some of you in here can probably relate. Maybe you're, maybe you're devoted to, you're dedicated and loyal to sports or to band or to choir or to some other uh, activity at your school, you, you participate in those things religiously. You, you, you participate in everything with that religiously. You are devoted to those activities. Maybe you are loyal and dedicated to a relationship with another person. You think about them nonstop. You, you talk to them every chance you get. You just want to be with them all the time. You are devoted to that person. There may be some other things that I didn't list. As you look at your own heart and your own life, you may see some things that you are loyal to, that you are dedicated to, that you would say, man, I am devoted to these things. And listen, I'm not saying that any of these things are necessarily bad things that you are devoted to, but, but they, they can be and, and can become unhealthy devotions. So let, let me just have a moment of transparency with you. I believe that in my own life, I have an unhealthy devotion to this thing right here. All right? Maybe some of you can relate. But man, as I, as I have looked at my own life over the last uh, several months and weeks, I have just realized, man, I, I waste a lot of time on this in the evenings. Now, not at work. It's not really a, a problem for me at work. But, but 
When I'm at home just sitting on the couch, watching TV, watching a movie, I, I usually have my phone with me and usually turned on and usually going from one app to the next as if in two minutes something life-changing has happened on my phone that I need to look at it again, right? You may call it an addiction. I'm calling it tonight an unhealthy devotion. And so as I have recognized this, one of the things that I have done, and Emily can attest to this, I bought a, a box on Amazon that I can put my phone in when I'm at home that has a timed lock on it so that I cannot get my phone out for the length of time that it is in that box, right? Because I don't know how to stop myself, right? It is an unhealthy devotion that I have developed to this device right here. And so as we think about the things that, that you may say that you are devoted to, right, all too often the things that we are devoted to, they may be good things, but, but they can become unhealthy devotions whenever we allow them to become more important and to take the place of the things that we truly should be devoted to. Right? Some of the things that I realize that I'm missing out on is simply spending time with my family. Like I'm sitting on the couch with Ethan watching a, a movie or a TV show, and I'm looking at my phone. Instead of enjoying the moment with my son, I, I'm simply looking at my phone. Other times, right, Emily wants to show something to me, and I'm busy looking at my phone, right? And so there's this unhealthy devotion. And so when, when a devotion of ours begins to take the place of something that truly should be our devotion, it has become an unhealthy devotion. And our unhealthy devotions can move from there to become idols, to become false gods in our life, right? It, it can be a devotion, and then it becomes an unhealthy devotion, and then it becomes an idol. It becomes a false god in our life. So examine your own heart tonight and ask yourself, what am I devoted to? And do I have things in my life that I am devoted to that truly are unhealthy devotions? Or, or maybe even... Do I have things in my life that have become unhealthy devotions that have become idols in my life that I have allowed myself to be devoted to, to take the place of things that I truly should be devoted to, or maybe even they've taken the place of being devoted to the Lord. So as we look at our passage tonight, there are four specific things that we see in verse 42 that, that the people in this passage were devoted to. And I believe that if we are going to grab hold of this vision in 2021, and I hope you will grab hold of it with me, if we are going to grab hold of this vision to see God doing a great and mighty thing in this student ministry, in this church, because of what he's doing in our lives, in our schools, in our homes, around us, then, then it's going to begin in our own lives by us being devoted also to these four things that we see in verse 42. All right, so first, we need to be devoted to God's word. We need to be devoted to God's word. Verse 42 tells us they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. So what were the apostles teaching? The apostles were teaching the, the good news. They, the disciples were proclaiming the good news. They were proclaiming that Jesus had died, that Jesus rose again, that Jesus ascended, and that Jesus was coming back again. They were teaching truth from God's word, just as I stand here tonight teaching you truth from God's word. This is what they were devoted to. They were devoted to God's word. So understand, they didn't just listen to God's word and then go home and put it aside until the next week. 
They were devoted to it. They were loyal to it. They were dedicated to it. They allowed for God's word to be what consumed them, to be what guided them, to be their standard for their life. And so God's word wasn't just a Sunday morning thing or a Wednesday night thing or a growth group thing or a sermon thing. God's word was an everyday thing for them. They were loyal to it. They were dedicated to it. They were devoted to it. And so students, if you are going to see your friends coming to know the Lord like crazy this year, If we're going to see a a massive move of God with God bringing your friends into this place like crazy, giving their lives to him. Guys, it's going to start with you first being devoted to his word, being loyal to, being dedicated to, allowing for God's word to be the standard for your life, allowing for God's word to be what consumes you, not just on Sundays or Wednesdays, but every single day of life. The week. So they were devoted to God's word. Second, they were devoted to gathering. They were devoted to gathering. The word we see in verse 42 is fellowship. But we see Luke elaborate a little more in verse 46. He says that they were devoted to meeting together in the temple, right? Which would, for us, it'd be like going to church. They were they were devoted to meeting together in the temple. They didn't just do this. Once a week, right? they did it every single day according to this passage. They were devoted to meeting together in the temple every single day. Can you imagine that, us coming up here every single day? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, every single day gathering together. Not only were they gathering together in the temple every day, but it also says that they were going from house to house. They couldn't get enough of each other. They were like, I saw you at the temple, now I want to come see you at your house, right? Because they loved Jesus so much, they loved each other so much. And that love for each other was contagious. That love for Jesus was contagious. And people saw what was happening with their devotion to the Lord, with their devotion to gathering, with their devotion to each other, to this fellowship, to this gathering. And people were like, I want to be a part of that too. Guys, if you get devoted to gathering together with one another, you're going to be offering something contagious. You're going to have something contagious, something that people want, especially in a year after the year, right? We are in a year after the year. And the year that we just ended was social distancing, separation, isolation. People are wanting, they are wanting relationship. That's what we were created for, relationship. And if you become devoted to gathering, man, you are on fire about coming. And we're not even asking you to come every single day of the week. You just want to come on Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights. If you get passionate about that, man, and you're on fire for it, it's going to be contagious. And people are going to say, I want to go to that with you. I want to be a part of what you're going to be a part of. That sounds amazing. Amazing. I'm tired of this social distancing. I'm tired of of this isolation. I want to gather with you guys. So guys, I, I am imploring you this year, raise your level of devotion to gathering. Don't just let Wednesday night be something that's on on the list of maybes. Make it a priority in your life. Don't just let Sunday morning be a, a an option for you. Make it a priority in your life. I want to go and gather. I want to be devoted to gathering. So we saw that they were devoted to God's word. They were also devoted to gathering. Third, they were devoted to remembering Jesus' death. They were devoted to remembering Jesus' Jesus's death. So in verse 42 and verse 46, we see that, that they were breaking bread together. Right Now, part of what, what it means they were doing is, is similar to what we do as Baptists. They were having some good old Baptist fellowship meals. Right, They were going from home to home and eating some good old home cooking together. Right, 
They were enjoying each other's presence over a meal, and, and we do that often. But, but it doesn't say right here that, that they were going from home to home and sharing a pie. They may have been, but it doesn't say that. It doesn't say they were eating stew, right? It specifically uses that phrase that they were breaking bread together. And that phrase is important because that phrase means more than simply just eating together. That's what it does mean. They were eating together. But as we think about that phrase, that that bread is broken, it's a reminder of Jesus' body broken for us. In fact, Jesus said, as often as you do this, when he broke the bread, as often as you do this, they're doing it every day of the week. As often as you do this, do it and in remembrance of me. Remember, remember my death. Remember my body broken for you. Guys, they were continually devoted to remembering Jesus' death. This is important for us, guys, because I wholeheartedly believe if we will be devoted to remembering Jesus' death, it will change things for us. It will change how you live. If your life becomes shaped by not your video games, not your classes at school, if your life becomes shaped by the fact that Jesus died for you, it is going to change how you live. Let me just give you a simple example. Let's say you are facing a temptation to sin. You've got this temptation right in front of you. If in that moment you remind yourself that Jesus died for you and you take it a step further to not only be reminded that Jesus died for you, but but to also give thanks to Jesus for dying for you, I tell you what. It's going to be very difficult for you to give in to that temptation, to give in to that sin. If you are are purposefully and intentionally remembering Christ's death and giving him thanks for his death, it is going to change how you respond to different situations in life. And as your life is changed by this realization and this reminder that Christ died for you, Others are going to see that, but they're also going to hear it because when you realize that Christ died for you, man, that is an amazing thing. We, we pass by that in, in, in our churches, right? We, we just kind of, we talk about it, but, but it has become this mundane thing for us as Christians, especially in America, right? We just kind of treat Christ's death as, yes, that happened, right? And I'm not trying to give a blanket statement to say that everybody treats it that way all the time, right? I know that we remember it. I know that we sing about it. But oftentimes, the the thought that Jesus died for us has just become a part of things for us. And we don't let that idea, that, that we don't let it radically change us. And I believe that if we will truly let it sink in and we will be reminded each and every day that our lives will be radically changed by his spirit because of his death. And that will, in turn, cause you to not just live differently, but it's going to make you talk differently. You're going to share this with others and you're going to start seeing those friends come to know the Lord. All right, so they, they were devoted to God's word. They were devoted to gathering. They were devoted to, to remembering Jesus' death. Finally, they were devoted to prayer. They were devoted to prayer. This final thing is, is, is what we see, the final thing listed in verse 42, that they were devoted to prayer. Students, can I just tell you, we need to be devoted to prayer. And I don't just mean prayer right here. I mean prayer in our lives, prayer outside of these walls, prayer in your homes, prayer wherever you go. We need to be devoted to prayer. So I, I've been reading a book by a man by the name of A.W. Tozer. And in this book, he compares this life to a battleground. And, and the battleground that he's referring to is a spiritual battleground, pointing out that there is a spiritual battle raging around us that we cannot see. 
A lot of times we see the effects of this spiritual battle in physical ways in this world through sin, right? Through rebellion. But, but there is a spiritual battle raging in this world that we cannot see. And all too often, we are distracted by entertainment in this world. We are distracted by our own desires in this world. And so we, we all too often don't look at this world as a battleground, but we look at it as a playground, as if we're just here to play, as if we're just here to enjoy ourselves. And so instead of entering the battle in prayer, instead of getting onto the battlefield through prayer, we just sit on the sidelines. We just sit on the sidelines. But guys, if we will recognize that there is a battle raging, and part of that battle is a battle for your friends. Guys, the enemy does not want what we're talking about tonight. The enemy does not want your friends coming to know the Lord. He doesn't want it. But it doesn't matter what he wants. We have a God who is bigger. We have a God who is greater. And we have the opportunity through prayer to enter the battle, to cry out to God on behalf of our friends. And let me tell you, your friends are not going to come to know the Lord apart from you beginning to pray for them right now. You need to begin to pray for your friends. Allow for that spiritual battle to, to, to begin right now. That you enter that. You begin praying for them so that God's Spirit can already begin working on them. That they might come out of their sins. All of that works together, guys. All of this stuff that, that the apostles were devoted to. That, that these disciples were devoted to. All of that works together. And so we see, that we see all of these things, these four things that they were devoted to. We see that they were devoted to, to God's word, that they were devoted to gathering, that they were devoted to remembering Jesus' death, that they were devoted to prayer. We see all of these things that they were devoted to, and then we see that last thing in verse 47. Every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Guys, it is not beyond God to do something amazing like adding people to the number every single day and every single week. I know it sounds like a crazy thing for us to say, imagine all of your friends getting saved. Imagine all of your friends coming out of their sins. Imagine that. But it's not beyond God, and he's done it before, and he can do it again. And let me tell you, he can do it in this place, and he can do it this year. The question is, what are you devoted to? And so tonight, I'm going to invite Matthew back up here, the band, whoever's coming. I'm going to invite them back up here. And tonight, let me just encourage you to examine your heart in this place. Examine your heart in this time and, and answer that question between you and God honestly. What am I devoted to? And are there things in my life that are holding me back in my devotion to the Lord? Are there things in my life that, that are holding me back from, from being a part of this vision? For God to do this great and mighty thing. You know what? What would it be like if his friends came to know the Lord and his friends came to know the Lord and your friends didn't, what would it be like? That would be sad. But guys, it doesn't have to be like that. All of your friends can, become, uh, can begin coming to know the Lord as you will be devoted to these things. But most importantly, the thing that we need to be devoted to and all of these fall under it is to the Lord himself. We need to be devoted to Jesus Christ. And if we will be devoted to him, we will see that we are devoted to these other four things. And so what are you devoted to tonight, guys? What are the things in your life that, that are holding you back from being wholly devoted to Jesus? 
And as you recognize those things, I implore you to confess those things to the Lord tonight and allow him to do a work in you. Allow this vision to begin tonight in your hearts. Allow that to happen. And guys, commit to this with me. Don't just let this be a one-night sermon. Commit to this with me for 2021 that we are going to see God do great and mighty things in this place in this year. If you want to pray with us, we're going to be at the back. The leaders will be. If there are things in your life that you just need to get right tonight, we're going to be at the back. You can come and talk with us. You can come and pray with us. Maybe you've given your life to Christ, but you've never taken that next step to be baptized, to make your faith public. If you're going to be devoted to this, if you're going to be devoted to the Lord, then you need to take that next step to be baptized. Maybe you're here tonight and you would say, you have never given your life to Christ. If you're going to be devoted, then it starts with you turning from your sins and allowing Jesus to be the Lord of your life. So if you've never made that decision, I invite you to join us at the back. If you need to make any type of decision tonight, join us at the back. Allow for God to do a work in your heart that tonight, tonight would be the beginning of a year unlike any year here at First Baptist Watauga and in our student ministry. Stand with me right now and let's pray together. I hope that you were encouraged by this message today and I'd love to hear from you. If you'd like more information about our student ministry, if you need prayer, or if you'd like to make a decision to make Jesus the Lord of your life, head on over to fbcwatauga.org slash students, scroll down towards the bottom of that page and you'll see a place that you can send me a message directly. My desire is that you would experience the difference that Jesus makes in your life this week.